Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode. In this video, we are going to explore the world of electric vehicles, or EVs for short. EVs are taking over the automotive industry, and one of the most successful examples of an EV is the Tesla Model Y. This car is not only the best-selling EV in the world in 2023, but it is also the best-selling car of any kind. That top position was previously held by a gasoline-powered car, the Toyota Corolla. Gasoline-powered cars are also known as the Internal Combustion Engine Vehicles, or ICE for short. Later in this episode, we will explore the differences between EVs and ICE vehicles. Now back to the Model Y, it is a product of Tesla Motors, a company owned by Elon Musk with a mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Based in the United States and with factories all over the globe, Tesla is spearheading the electric vehicle revolution in the world. Just this year alone, they are targeting to deliver about 1.8 million electric cars. That is no small feat and no other electric manufacturer comes close. And the best-selling car that we were just talking about is one piece in their lineup of cars, which include the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, and Model Y, which cleverly spells out as sexy. And no, we did not make that up. That was a deliberate move by Elon Musk in the development philosophy of Tesla cars. But more notably, Tesla delivers some serious and arguably the best performance and innovation you can find in a car, some of which we will discuss in this episode. And at the end of 2023, Tesla delivered their first electric pickup truck, the Cybertruck, a revolutionary vehicle in the truck world. But what about here in Kenya? Can you get your hands on a Tesla car? Well, not yet. Tesla does not directly sell their vehicles in Africa, so we might have to wait until they expand their market. However, that does not mean that we are left out of the EV movement. There are of course several other brands of EVs that are available in Kenya, and some of which are assembled locally. For example, the Nissan Leaf, which is a popular EV in many countries, is also available for purchase in Kenya. And to show his support for the EV industry, the Kenyan president chose to drive a locally assembled electric car when he was attending a global climate summit in the country's capital, Nairobi. According to the 2023 e-mobility report by Kenya Power Company, there are around 1,300 EVs on the Kenyan roads. This include personal cars, public buses, and motorbikes. So why are EVs becoming popular all around the globe? What are the benefits of driving an electric car? How do they work? And what do you need to know before buying one? These are some of the questions we will answer in this episode. And we will also attempt to clear up some common myths and misconceptions about EVs. So stay tuned, fasten your seatbelts, and let's begin this electrifying journey. So to begin, let's understand how EVs work. EVs have an electric motor that uses a battery pack to power the wheels and move the vehicle. The battery pack can be recharged by plugging the vehicle into an electric socket or a charging station. So unlike traditional cars, you don't need to visit a gas station to fill up your tank. There is no tank. Just charge your car like you'd recharge your phone. You drive it around until the battery is low and then you plug it in again. The motor converts the electricity from the battery into motion to drive the car. On the other hand, the traditional gasoline-powered cars have what is called an internal combustion engine, or ICE. This engine burns fuel like petrol and diesel to create energy that moves the car. But the problem with that 
is that it creates harmful emissions that contribute to climate change and air pollution. EVs do not have an engine. They use an electric motor that runs on clean energy from the battery, and this makes them eco-friendly and more efficient than ICE vehicles. Actually, environmental responsibility is one of the main drivers for EV adoption all around the world. Locally here in Kenya, EVs are still not very common. And why is that, you might ask? Well, there are a number of reasons. One of them is that EVs are still relatively new, and people don't know much about them. There is a need for more public education and awareness. People need to know about the benefits and features of EVs. Another reason is that EVs are still quite expensive. If you compare a similar model of an EV and an ICE vehicle, EVs are more expensive at the point of purchase. Currently in Kenya, there are a few models that one can choose from in the market, such as the Nissan Leaf, the BMW i3, and even the locally assembled iev 2 But before you decide to buy an EV, there are some things you need to consider. And so we've compiled a list of four important factors that you might want to look at. But of course, there are other factors that are tailored to your personal preferences and circumstances. Let's have a look at the four factors. Cost is one of the things you always consider before buying anything, and EVs are not different. As mentioned earlier, EVs are generally more expensive at the point of purchase than ICE vehicles. But they can also save you money in the long run. But how, you ask? Well, charging an EV is cheaper than filling up a gas tank, especially considering the high cost of fuel in Kenya right now. Basically, that means it would cost you less to travel the same distance with an EV. It is important to also consider the fact that EVs have fewer moving parts compared to ICE vehicles, which means they require less maintenance and lower repair costs. There are no oil changes or frequent servicing required by EVs compared to ICE vehicles. So even though you may pay more upfront for an EV, you may end up spending less over time, which will save you a lot of money. But how far can you go with an EV on a full charge? That is the second thing you want to consider when buying an EV. The distance you can travel with an EV is called the vehicle range. And this is one of the biggest concerns for potential EV buyers. They worry that they will run out of battery power before they can reach their destination. This is what is called range anxiety. Most EVs offer different options for different customers. For example, the Design Leaf has two versions, one that can travel 240 kilometers and another that can travel 350 kilometers of range. That is more than plenty for the normal consumer who makes short trips to work and running errands. The Tesla Model Y has different versions too, with the highest going up to 250 kilometers. It is important to note that these are just estimates. The actual range in the real world may vary depending on things like weather, road condition, the speed, and your driving style. Usually, the real world range is lower than the estimated range by about 10 to 15 percent, or thereabout. Another question is, where can you charge your EV when the battery is running low? The availability and the compatibility of charging stations is crucial for the success of EVs. Charging stations are like gas stations. Except in the case of EVs, you go there to plug in your car and recharge the battery. But unlike gas stations, charging stations are not very common in Kenya. There are only a few public charging stations available and most of them are located in Nairobi and they are generally quite slow. But it is encouraging that there are charging companies that have started installing their own chargers to attract consumers. And even the Kenyan government is planning to improve the charging infrastructure with an ambitious project to install charging stations every 25 kilometers on major highways. And some businesses such as banks and malls are installing chargers at their premises to the convenience of their customers. One of the reasons that led to the success of Tesla is their charging infrastructure. If Kenya had the kind of charging infrastructure that Tesla offers, a road trip in an EV from Kisumu to Mombasa, which is about 800 kilometers, would be possible. But as of now in 2023, it is practically impossible. 
The final important factor to consider when buying an EV is the availability of government incentives. The government may offer lower taxes and other favorable policies to encourage the development and adoption of electric vehicles. For example, in May 2023, EPRA, which is the energy regulator in Kenya, approved a separate tariff for EV owners. This meant that you can charge your vehicle at a discounted price, which is less than the normal cost per unit of power. This is one of the great incentives to increase the number of EVs on the road. So always research to see how you can take advantage of the available incentives. Now, apart from the four main factors we've discussed, there are other issues that might matter to you personally. And this may include things like the software features that come with the vehicle, the ease of operation, things like availability of vehicle stock, and more. Different TV brands offer various software features, such as a mobile app companion, advanced autopilot, and others. Some EVs such as Tesla are heavily focused on software capabilities, and this allows them to be improved with over-the-air software updates that can be downloaded to the car just like you update your phone. For instance, Tesla cars have the ability to direct you to available chargers during your trip, which makes your trip planning much more easier. So as a consumer, you may be attracted to some of these features that may increase the ease of operation of your vehicle. Software features also improve the safety of vehicles. And once again, referring to the Tesla Model Y, it is rated as one of the safest vehicles in the world, especially considering its ability to detect and avoid accidents or minimize damage to occupants in case of an accident. And when talking about the vehicle stock, this is because some EV manufacturers may not have readily available cars to purchase. EV technology is still developing, and some manufacturers may be struggling with the high demand for their products. So it may take weeks or months before you get your car delivered. So when purchasing an EV or considering to purchase one, be sure to check on the availability of the cars. And now moving on, let's talk about the lack of public awareness and campaigns on EVs, which has led to several misconceptions that may prevent some people from considering EVs as a viable option for transportation. So the first myth is that EVs are slow and lack power. And this is absolutely wrong, as EVs are actually faster and more powerful than gasoline-powered cars. One of the fastest acceleration vehicles in production right now is the Tesla Model S Plaid version. This car can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers in just about 3 seconds. EVs don't rely on an engine and transmission system. This means that power is always available immediately as soon as you need it. This makes them more powerful. Furthermore, due to the lack of an engine, EVs have a quieter and smoother ride. Another myth is that EVs will die on you suddenly. This is a common misconception that does not consider the real world. Just like your phone, your EV will always show you the battery percentage available, and it will also show you the available range you can go. This means you can appropriately charge your vehicle when it is low. Now up next, let's talk about the questions you might be asking yourself when considering to buy an electric vehicle. First, how accurate is the estimated range? Well, the truth is, you will hardly get the same range as the estimate. That's because the estimate is based on ideal driving conditions, which is rare in the real world. No EVs, not even Tesla, can match the promised range. You should always expect the actual range to be lower by about 10 to 20 percent. And furthermore, factors like weather, speed, and even road quality may affect the range. Second, which EV should I buy? This depends on your personal needs and preferences. You should consider different factors before choosing your model. For example, how often do you drive and how far? Do you have access to charging stations near you? For instance, if you do short commutes daily, you might not need a long-range EV. But if you travel long distances frequently, like from Nairobi to Nakuru, which is about 161 kilometers, then you should look for a longer range EV. In conclusion, as the world rapidly shifts towards sustainability and environmental responsibility, we have learned that electric vehicles are a great way to reduce carbon emissions 
and enjoy a better driving experience. But are they right for you in Kenya? Should you get yourself one? That depends on the several factors that we have discussed. There is no one solution that fits all. EVs have many advantages, such as saving you money on maintenance and fuel. But they also have the challenge of low public awareness and several myths. So now, before you buy an EV, you should consider your personal needs, your preferences, and budget. You should compare the pros and cons of EVs and see which one suits your situation. And that brings us to the end of this video. We hope you found it informative and helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And please subscribe to the channel to support us and to stay updated with our latest videos. Thank you for watching and let's meet in the next one.